We all have heard of the words organic and inorganic. What are they? How they even affect us? What is chemistry? Chemistry, the science that delves into the structure, properties, and reactions of matter, is often divided into two broad branches, organic and inorganic chemistry. These two fields, while sharing a common foundation, explore different realms of the chemical universe. But what exactly distinguishes organic from inorganic chemistry? And why is this distinction so crucial in our understanding of the world around us? In this video, we'll explore these two fascinating branches of chemistry, delving into their definitions, key differences, and real-world examples that highlight their importance. Organic chemistry is often described as the chemistry of life. It focuses on compounds that contain carbon atoms, which are unique in their ability to form stable, complex structures with other elements, particularly hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. The versatility of carbon allows for the creation of a vast array of molecules, from the simplest hydrocarbons, like methane, to the complex proteins and DNA that make up living organisms. For instance, consider the molecule glucose, a simple sugar that our bodies use for energy. Glucose is an organic compound made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms arranged in a specific structure. This molecule is crucial in biology as it fuels cellular respiration, the process by which our cells produce energy. Organic chemistry helps us understand how glucose is synthesized, how it reacts with other molecules in the body, and how its structure is related to its function. But organic chemistry isn't limited to biological molecules. It also includes synthetic compounds, such as plastics, pharmaceuticals, and dyes. In contrast, inorganic chemistry deals with a much broader range of substances, including metals, minerals, and organometallic compounds, which contain metal carbon bonds. Inorganic compounds don't necessarily contain carbon atoms, and they exhibit a wider variety of chemical behaviors compared to organic compounds. For example, consider table salt or sodium chloride. This simple inorganic compound is composed of sodium and chloride ions held together by ionic bonds. Unlike the covalent bonds typically found in organic molecules, ionic bonds involve the transfer of electrons from one atom to another, creating charged particles that attract each other. Sodium chloride is essential not just in our diets, but also in various industrial processes, such as water purification and the production of chlorine gas. Another example of inorganic chemistry at work is the study of transition metals, like iron, copper, and platinum. These metals are central to countless technologies, from the construction of buildings to the functioning of electronic devices. Iron, for instance, is a key component of hemoglobin, the molecule in red blood cells that carries oxygen throughout the body. Understanding how iron interacts with other elements and how its properties can be modified is a critical part of inorganic chemistry. Now that we've outlined the basics, let's delve into the key differences between organic and inorganic chemistry. The first and most obvious difference is the presence of carbon. Organic chemistry is primarily concerned with carbon-containing compounds, while inorganic chemistry encompasses all other elements. Secondly, the types of bonds that predominate in these fields differ. Organic compounds typically involve covalent bonds, where atoms share electrons. This allows for the formation of complex and stable structures. In contrast, inorganic compounds often feature ionic bonds, where electrons are transferred between atoms, leading to the formation of charged ions. The complexity of the molecules also sets these two fields apart. Organic compounds can form long chains and rings, leading to a vast diversity of structures, from simple molecules like ethanol to massive macromolecules like DNA. Inorganic compounds, while also diverse, tend to be simpler in structure, although they can still be incredibly complex, such as in the case of coordination compounds where a central metal atom is surrounded by other molecules or ions. Another key difference lies in the methods used to study these compounds. Organic chemists often use techniques like NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance, and mass spectrometry to determine the structure and composition of organic molecules. Inorganic chemists, on the other hand, might use techniques like X-ray crystallography or atomic absorption spectroscopy 
to analyze the properties of metals and minerals. While organic and inorganic chemistry are distinct fields, they are by no means isolated from each other. In fact, the boundary between them is often blurred. For example, organometallic chemistry, which involves compounds that contain both organic ligands and metal atoms, sits at the intersection of these two disciplines. Organometallic compounds play crucial roles in catalysis, where they facilitate chemical reactions that are otherwise difficult or slow. Consider the Grignard reagent, an organometallic compound used in organic synthesis. It consists of a magnesium atom bonded to a carbon atom, and it's highly reactive, making it a valuable tool for forming new carbon-carbon bonds in organic molecules. And this is a prime example of how inorganic chemistry provides the tools and techniques that organic chemists need to create complex molecules. Another area of overlap is bioinorganic chemistry, which explores the role of metals in biological systems. Hemoglobin, as mentioned earlier, is an excellent example of this. The iron atom in hemoglobin binds to oxygen, enabling the transport of oxygen through the bloodstream. Understanding the inorganic chemistry of iron is essential to comprehending how hemoglobin functions and why certain disorders, like anemia, occur when iron levels are insufficient. In summary, organic and inorganic chemistry are two sides of the same coin, each offering unique insights into the nature of matter. Organic chemistry allows us to explore the complex molecules that are essential to life and industry, while inorganic chemistry broadens our understanding to include metals, minerals, and other non-carbon-based compounds that are equally vital. By studying both organic and inorganic chemistry, scientists can develop new materials, advance medicine, and unlock the mysteries of life itself. Whether you're interested in the intricate dance of atoms in a carbon compound or the robust interactions in a metallic lattice, the world of chemistry is vast and endlessly fascinating. So the next time you encounter a chemical reaction, remember that it might be organic, inorganic, or perhaps a bit of both, contributing to the incredible diversity of matter in our universe.